business that we must do at the end of this particular summit is to have a working group given two or three months to come out with a legislative framework to ensure that the summit is a statutory body. Under the Intergovernmental Relations Act, the Council of Governors is a statutory body, is recognized in law. But this body is not recognized in any legislation. It's just that we, we happen to like each other and come to meet every year. But liking each other is not good enough. And you would find that under the Intergovernmental Relations Act, which the Cabinet Secretary is very familiar with, governors have functions, the President has functions, statutory functions, which are laid clearly in the law. So I'm hoping that before we go even into individual statutes that you want Senate or the National Assembly to pass, we should have a legal framework for this forum so that it's called truly a legislative forum. And I want to urge that it's not enough for the Senate and the county assemblies to meet. I think we need both the Senate, county assembly, and the National Assembly. Because the Constitution is very clear. The power of legislation, the sovereign has passed it at the national level, both on the Senate and the National Assembly and the county level to the county assemblies. And we should not lose it that the person who votes the county assembly, member of the county assembly, is the same person who votes the governor. He is the same person who votes the president. And that vote to that voter is equal and very important. So I hope that uh, uh, Mr. Speaker and the chair that we will be able to have this working group so that we have that legislation in, in place. My second point is this. County assemblies are parliaments. I want to repeat, county assemblies are parliaments. They come in the same article that provides for the National Assembly and the Senate, Article 1 of the Constitution. And the Constitution requires that parliaments be given adequate services and facilities in order to carry out their work effectively. Now, again, we need that framework so that we can sit together and agree for the county assembly to do its work effectively across the board. And moving together with parliament and uh, the National Assembly and the Senate, what are the minimum requirements for a county assembly or for a county, a member of the county assembly to carry out her work or his work effectively and in a manner that will bring results to the people of Kenya and the people of the counties. Thirdly, the question of autonomy for the county assemblies are important. Because when you look at both at the national level and the county level, when the executive is entering this room, you could even see, I was told in Nigeria, one time I went in Nigeria, when governors are arriving, you got to stop speaking. But when members of parliament are arriving, the meeting goes on. You know, we have to make sure that the county assemblies have their own autonomy, financial autonomy, and the treasury. Treasury should not be an imperial power governing county government and county assemblies, if you really you are an independent legislative institution. And I end up by saying I'm a supporter of gender equality and people with challenges. And if you want to doubt me, the revolution in Sudan, which is ongoing, has been led by women. When the men were afraid, it is the women who have made changes to take place in Sudan. So we need more women in county assemblies, more women 
in National Assembly and the Senate, and you'll see change coming to Kenya faster than it has been coming. Thank you very much. Mm.